belongs, Father God. We thank you for all the blessings, Father. And we just need more of you. We need more of you, Holy Spirit. So we ask you to come, Holy Spirit. Say that with me. Say, come, Holy Spirit. Say, come, Holy Spirit. Minister to me. Show me things that I need to know. I receive freedom in every area that Jesus died to give me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I've been fasting and praying for this meeting. And um, yesterday morning I woke up and many times when I first wake up I hear the voice of the Lord and the Lord said to me, well, he shared with me what he wanted me to tell you. And this is for everyone in the room and those who are watching. The Lord said that you may not be ready or believe this message that I'm going to share today. You may not realize the pattern that God has in you right now. But the Lord said that he wants you to meditate on what I'm going to be sharing today. Meditate on it because you were made to do this. You were made to walk in it. You were made to walk in what the word of God says. Amen? amen. amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to dream again. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants us to dream. Mm -hmm. You're never too old. It's never too late to step into your call. Mm -hmm. It's never too late for you to do what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. He's the God of second chance, third chance. And no matter what's gone on in your life, God knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. He knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so he has already fixed it. So it's going to be okay. He's the God that restores. He restores everything that the enemy stole. Every single thing. Hallelujah. He restores everything. And you know, there are people in the Bible that God put there for us to find out about them, to read and find out, to give us hope, to give us encouragement. We all know the story about Abraham. There was an impossible situation for Abraham, right? God told him he was going to be a father of many nations, and he had no children. Well, when he was 100 years old, his wife had a baby, and she was 90. He started his ministry that old, 100. I don't think anybody in here is a 100. And how about Caleb and Moses? They were both 80 years old. Moses was 80 when he started his ministry. Caleb was 80 when he took the promised land. He said, give me that mountain. And they weren't even born again. They weren't born again. We're born again. We have the spirit of the living God living inside of us. You have greatness in you. God lives big in you because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God lives big in you, saints. God wants us to believe that his kingdom is advancing in our lives. He wants us to believe that. See, that's what faith does. Faith believes that our future is going to be better than our past was. That's what faith does. Faith does not keep rehearsing the past, the bad past. No, if your mind is doing that, you need to take what the word of God says and cast that thought down. That's what the Bible says, casting down every thought and every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge and the word of God. Every Christian on the face of the earth has to do this. Nobody is exempt. God has no respect to a person. But he is a respect to a faith because faith pleases God. And we don't receive anything unless we apply our faith our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did, and our faith in God's word, because Jesus is the word. In Matthew 6, Jesus told us what to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Father wants us to bring heaven to earth. He wants heaven on earth. Jesus came and restored what the enemy stole. He took away all his power, and now the Lord wants us to enforce 
the victory that Jesus already won. Jesus has, he's been victorious. He was victorious over the enemy, wasn't he? Yeah. Isn't that what the cross is all about? Yeah. He was victorious, but now we are on the earth and we need to enforce that victory. Everything we do for the Lord Jesus Christ, we do it from the place of victory. We have the victory. There's victory in Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. So we have to have that mindset. No matter what's going on, we can have heaven on earth. Why? Because it's the will of God. What is the will of God? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. If you're going through a situation and, and it's not a good one, don't say, God, why are you allowing this? Mm -mm, he's not allowing it. He already defeated it. Amen. We need to step into faith. We need to press in and keep believing and not give up. Amen. We need to keep declaring what the Lord says. What does the word of God say about it? There's power in the word. Yes. So everything we do, we do it from a place of victory. It's already been settled. Jesus already took care of it. Now we have to step into it. No matter what it is, we have to step into it. So the Father's will is for us to bring heaven to earth. Us. He uses people. Do you ever notice when you read the Bible? All through the Bible, from, generation, from Genesis to Revelation, God uses people to get his will done on the earth. Have you noticed that? Yes. So why do we think it's going to happen different for us? Oh, God, why are you doing this? Oh, God, why are you letting this happen? Why? Why? Why are we questioning the Lord when from Genesis to Revelation, God uses people? You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The greater one lives in you. Greater is he who lives in you than he who is in the world. You have the greater one in you right now. And God wants to do a work through you. We're never too old. It's never too late. Jeremiah 29, 11. I have plans for you, says the Lord. Yes, thank you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. You have to take the scriptures and believe it. Amen. Have faith in the prayers you've prayed. Amen. For us not to believe that things are going to get better in our life is to not even acknowledge that what we've prayed. Amen. You have no faith in your prayers if you don't think things are going to get better. <laughs> but God always has a plan for you. He always has a plan. Because you guys are chosen. First Peter 2 and 9. God just keeps highlighting that verse to me. He's been highlighting 1 Peter 2 and 9 for months. And I'm going to read it from the Passion. It says, but you are God's chosen treasures. Hallelujah. You are a treasure. You are God's chosen treasures. This word treasure comes from the Hebrew. And this word in the Hebrew, and it means a special treasure or possession. You are God's special treasure. You are God's possession. You know that, right? That your life is not your own anymore? You know that Jesus purchased you with his blood. You've been purchased with the blood of Jesus. So you can't say, well, this is my life. No, it's not. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm-mm. He, he bought you with his blood. You have a treasure. You are a treasure. As a matter of fact, turn real, if you have your Bible, turn real quick with me to the book of Malachi, and I'm going to show you. Real quick, Malachi 1. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels or my treasure. This word treasure means jewels as well. It means jewels. When did God make you his jewel? When you accepted Jesus, his son, as your Lord and Savior. Old things have passed away. You became brand new. You became brand new that day. You're a jewel. You 
are a chosen people. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Yeah, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. You're chosen. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. You're chosen. You're a jewel. You're a treasure in the kingdom of God. God needs you to appreciate who he made you. He needs you to appreciate. So this word treasure means possession. You're God's possession. It is used to describe guarded wealth indicating the placement of king's jewels or treasure, etc. And, and, and what God does here, it says that he puts his jewels in a safe, protected place because of their extraordinary value. You should write that one down. God puts you, his treasure, in a protected place because of your extraordinary value. You are so valuable to the Lord. You are his jewel, you are his treasure on the earth because Jesus lives in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep your focus on Jesus. It reminds me of this woman. How many of you remember the song? <clears throat> Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Remember that song? Look full in his wonderful face. And the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. A woman was married. This is going back. I forget how, how long ago that song was written. But she was married and she became very ill and the disease that she was attacked with caused her to go blind. And her husband left her. And she wrote that song after that happened to her. Hallelujah. She wrote that song. See, she tapped into the greatness in her. Amen. She tapped into the glory. Amen. She tapped into the treasure, to the jewel that she was. Hallelujah. We cannot allow our past to mess up what God has for us. Amen. Stop looking back, church. Don't look back. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one that wants to do mighty, wonderful works in your life. He has a plan. You're a chosen vessel. First Peter 2, 9 in the Passion. But you are God's chosen treasure priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. You're set apart. He called you out of darkness. This means spiritual darkness. He called you out of being spiritually in the dark. Your eyes have been opened. You have been enlightened now to the truth. This word darkness also means misery. We're not miserable. Did I say that right, Jason? No more miserable. Right. I'm not miserable. That's right. I said it right, Minnie Vincenz. We're not miserable anymore Amen. because he took us out of the kingdom of darkness yeah, thank you, Lord. and he put us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. 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 We are now in the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. And it Amen. came. Yes. Thy will Woo. be done. We are on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. Amen. He took us out of the darkness. This word darkness also means error. Or ignorance. We're not ignorant to the enemy's devices anymore. We cannot be fooled any longer. We are wise as serpents, but as gentle as doves. Amen. And we are expecting the kingdom of God in our life. You know what the Lord showed me one time? But that scripture, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And some of the verses say, in earth. Well, we were made from the dust of the ground, right, from the earth, and God molded us, and then he breathed the breath of life in us. Well, God's word is likened to a seed. We're earth. We plant the seed of God's word in our earth, and it grows. Amen. Thy will be done in earth, or on earth as it is in heaven. Just a little thing the Lord showed me years ago. But beloved, you are called to bring on earth what is in heaven. That's what we're called to do. We're called to bring what is in heaven on the earth. 
healing on the earth, deliverance on the earth, finances on the earth, joy on the earth, health, on, whatever it is. If it doesn't, if it's not in heaven, then we don't have to receive it on the earth. But you have a part to play in that. It doesn't come automatically. God's word is not automatic. It's not. And I think too many times Christians think, well, I'm saved, I accepted the Lord, so automatically all these things are going to happen for me. No. There's a God, small g, that roams the earth. The enemy is the God of this earth, God of this world. But our Lord and Savior is our King and Lord of everything. But we have to enforce the Word. We have to get in the Word of God every day and pray every day and seek the Lord every day. You need to fall in love with the Bible. Some people say, well, I don't understand it, or I can't remember it. Well, I had a meal last night. I cooked it, so I know it was in there. But if I go to a restaurant and I have a meal, I don't know all the ingredients. And I might go home the next day and not even remember what I ate. But it still nourished me. God's word is food for your spirit. It's food for your spirit. You need it every day. Every day you need the word of God. God says that each believer is a priest and king. This is the continued definition of treasure. His unique and special treasure of great importance. A treasure above all other treasures. You are chosen. You are his treasure. And don't leave yourself out no matter how old you are or how young you are. You are his treasure. Matthew 6 and 9. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This word kingdom, when you look it up, means royal dominion. You're royalty. Say, I'm royalty. royalty. You're royalty. You are royalty. Jesus is a king. We are his queens and kings on the earth. You're royalty. You're special. You're a treasure. And this word dominion, when you look it up, when you go back to Genesis, in Genesis 2, well, let me make sure I have it in my Bible. I have it underlined. Genesis 2. No, Genesis 1 and 26. Genesis 1, 26. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. This word dominion means to rule, to have power over. Amen. To have power over. Mm -hmm. He's given it to us, but we got to use it. Hallelujah. we got to use the word of God. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It cuts. And when it goes into us sometimes, it puts in what God wants, but it takes out what he doesn't want. Mm -hmm. Two-edged sword. But it also, we use that sword also against the enemy. It totally annihilates the enemy. Yeah. When you speak the word of God, you've got to have faith. You've got to believe. Pray in the Spirit. Build yourself up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Every day, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Train yourself to pray in the Spirit. Train yourself when you're driving, when you're doing something in the house. Train yourself to pray in the Spirit because that makes your spirit man stronger. And it, it keeps your spirit man in tune with the Holy Spirit. See, the walk that we want to walk is in the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And you'll continuously please the Lord as you walk in the Spirit. So this word, your kingdom, is royal dominion. And it means to rule and have power over. God has given us power. Supernatural power to reign on the earth as the jewel that you are. You already have it now. Don't ask them to give it to you. It's in you. You just have to exercise it. You just have to enforce the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to share a scripture that I've had questions about many years. And little by little, I'm getting more information and more enlightenment on it. And it's Matthew 7, 21 through 23. You might want to write it down. 
Now we're talking about God's will being done on the earth, right? So yes. 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 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many wonderful things in your name? And, when, and then I will declare to them, this is Jesus speaking, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Apart from me, business. Do they believe in the power of the name of Jesus? But they didn't surrender their life to him. They knew Jesus was Lord. They knew there was power in the name of Jesus. But their heart was not his. See, Jesus knows everyone. But not You have to surrender your whole heart. God wants our whole heart. It's only then that we'll step in to do him. 24. Some of you know it because some of you have prayed it. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Search me, O oh God. Why do I have to ask God to search me? Doesn't he know? He wants us to surrender our hearts to him. He wants to be number one in your life. He doesn't want to be number two. He doesn't want you to go to him when you've tried A, B, C, D, E, and F to be A. He wants to be number one. You go to him first. You don't go to him last. Twenty three, twenty four. Pray it to the Lord. If you haven't yet, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. And try me and see if there's anything wicked in me because the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. You could be walking in pride and not know it. Pride is a spirit. I had a wake up call one time about demon. I actually saw it. See, we're talking about thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants us to live in the heavenly realms on the earth. We can live on earth and live in the realm of heaven on earth. Because I already, we shared the scripture before, he took us out of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and brought us into his kingdom, the kingdom of his dear son. We're in the is tricky. He's a conniver. He's a deceiver. And one day something happened. I won't go through the whole story. And I actually, the Lord actually let me see that spirit of pride that I didn't know I had. And it was tall and thin with its nose up like this. You know the cartoons that they show? That's exactly what it looked like. Well, I had a fight on my hands when I saw that. God let me see. I had a battle. I battled with that thing for a good month. Until I was totally delivered from it. That's the last thing you want operating in you. 
God hates pride. He says that he'll push you away if you have pride. He wants us to be humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That's what the Bible says. Humble. So we want to be humble and ask God if there's anything in us. Because we want thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Amen. So we're talking about God's will on the earth. What is God's will on the earth? I'm going to talk about four things that I believe from the scriptures that God shows us what his will is on the earth. Number one, the great commission. The great commission. Let's turn to Mark 16 and 14. Hallelujah. Mark 16. And all of you, all of you, you know the scripture. Because we have to be reminded of what the Bible says. Thank you, Jesus. You're so awesome. The Great Commission. In my Bible, actually, the title of it here, the chapter, it says the Great Commission. Mark 16 and verse 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So, unbelief... Jesus says, is your heart is hard. You have to soften your heart. Do you know worship softens your heart? Worship prepares your heart to receive the word. That's why it's good to get here at 10 o'clock and, and enter into worship. Let the Holy Spirit soften the ground in your heart so you can receive the word of God. In verse 15, and Jesus said, and he's talking to his followers, his disciples, his chosen ones, and that's you. Say, that's me. That's He's talking to you today. Say, Jesus is talking to me. <laughs> and he's telling the church, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You don't have to be behind a pulpit to preach. That just means declare, tell, share. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Are you a believer? Yes. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Are you a believer? Yes. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. These signs will follow those who believe. What signs? In my name, so there's power in the name of Jesus. In my name, they will cast out demons. Sometimes the first demon we have to cast out is the one that's in us. I had a demon in me and didn't know it. And God opened my eyes. And I spoke to it and it left and never came back. Search me, O oh God, and know me. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. God wants everyone to pray in the Spirit. Don't leave yourself out of that gift. That's a gift for every single one. God wants everyone to pray in the Spirit. And it's not the gift of tongues with the interpretation to prophecy. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being baptized with the Holy Spirit and praying in the Spirit. Jude 20. It's Romans. It's in Ephesians. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you can receive it today. Everybody needs to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is what God wants you to do. Not just the pastor. Not just the evangelist. Not, not just Benny Hinn. Everybody in the body of Christ, God needs you to lay hands on the sick. Yeah. And they will recover. That's what the Bible says. We just read it. Are you a believer? Yes. And they will recover. Amen. And you know, I've prayed for people. I've laid hands on people and they didn't recover. But that that's not because God didn't do his part. When that happens, you just get back in your prayer closet and, and press in. Press in. Press in. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep seeking the kingdom. Keep seeking in the kingdom because this is the will of God. Yes. Yes. And one of my 
prayers recently is that the Lord would send a healing revival. Because too many Christians are sick. And Jesus already paid the price for them to be well. We need a healing revival. So number one, what is God's will? The Great Commission. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. This is also our part to play in the Great Commission. Because you have a call. Remember I shared with you Jeremiah 29, 11. I have plans for you, says the Lord. God has plans for you. Don't leave yourself out. God has plans for all of us. And they're good plans. They're exciting things. God wants to do exciting things. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We go down to verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You have a ministry. You know what it's called? The ministry of reconciliation. Say the ministry of reconciliation. So do you have a ministry? Yes. You have the ministry of reconciliation. We're all called to share the gospel. The ministry of reconciliation. That is, and this is the ministry, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. So that's the first thing you've got to tell people. You are forgiven. Jesus already paid the price for your sins. You're forgiven. And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We have to share the gospel. Reconciliation means from a state of enmity to friendship. Enmity is when you're against God. It means separation. You've been separated from God. But God wants to be near. He wants to be your best friend. That, that's what we're to tell people. We're not to tell people, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. That's not the gospel. The gospel is good news. Jesus already forgave you. Jesus shed his blood for you. You're forgiven. The grace of God is, you have, we have so much grace on us. We have no clue how much grace is on us and favor. We are living in the dispensation of the church age, the church age of grace. A new and better covenant. We are living in a better covenant than the old covenant. So number one is the Great Commission. Number two, we're talking about God's will, what he wants on the earth. Number two, heal the sick. We read Mark 16. Heal the sick. Right? We'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In Matthew 10 and 7 through 9 it says, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. There it is again. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Give what the Lord gave you. He gave you power on earth to bring heaven to earth. And don't give up if it doesn't work right away. Just keep going back to God and get in your prayer closet and pray. And start declaring the scriptures over yourself. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Amen. Start declaring what the Bible says about you. Stop saying, no, I can't do that. No, you're called to do that. You're his treasure. Amen. You're his chosen vessels. Amen. You are chosen, each and every one of you. You're chosen. Luke 9 and 12. Then he called, that's Luke 9 and 12 in case you've taken notes. So I'm rewriting it down. Luke 9 and 12. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. This word power means miraculous power. Miracle working power. Dunamis. Dynamite. He gave them power and authority. The right. It's your jurisdiction. You're the police officer. You're enforcing the word and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. That's what the Bible says. He gave us power and authority to cure all diseases. See, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to hear the word and not just hear it with our ears, 
We need revelation knowledge. This needs to be a revelation to you. You need to declare it over yourself. Pray over yourself. I pray over myself. Pray over yourself. Start with yourself. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. His disciples. You're a disciple of the Lord. Luke 10, 1 through, 1 through 3 says, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. The, these were just not his apostles. He appointed 70 others. These were followers. Are you a follower? He appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two. So it's good to go two by two. When you're going to go out and share the gospel, bring a friend, someone who believes. He sent them two by two before city and place where he himself was about to go. See, they prepared the way for the Lord. That's what that says. This is Jesus. Jesus sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Jesus was going to go to Samaria and preach the gospel, but he sent his followers there first to do the groundwork. Just like John the Baptist had to make a way for the Lord, we have to make a way for the Lord because he's coming. He's counting on the church. He uses people. Verse 2, Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. The harvest, if it was great then, how much greater is it now? And I want you to realize the followers, the disciples, the apostles were not born again. They were not born again. They did everything by what Jesus said. Jesus said, just go on in my name. Cast out devils in my name. Heal the sick in my name. And they obeyed, but they weren't born again. Jesus had not died yet and sent the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit living in you now. You have the Spirit of the living God in you now. You have greatness in you. You have power. Over all the power of the enemy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in you and in the earth. Your family, your loved ones, start with your family. This thing is real. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it exciting that what God wants you to do? It's so exciting to be a Christian. It's not boring. It's the most exciting way to live, to live as a Christian. Luke 10 and 9 says, heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. The kingdom of God. God's will on the earth. God wants his will on the earth. We have to use our faith and believe that the Lord will heal through us. Write down some declarations and start declaring the word of God over yourself. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I do that. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. God wants to use you, saints. Stop sitting on the sidelines, get in the game. So much more exciting when you're in the game. So much more exciting when you're in the game. He wants to use you. And you know what? I know, I feel funny too. In myself, I'm not bold at all. But I want to be obedient. And when you step into that obedience, the Holy Spirit comes and gives you the boldness. And you know what? There's a verse of scripture, I didn't write it down. But Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do, and greater works. <clears throat> greater works. And you know, as I'm praying about this message, I'm thinking about so many things the Lord's done in my life. And You know, you could just be saved a week and lay hands on the sick and they recover. You know that? Many years ago when I was first saved, I had a friend, a very close dear friend. I loved her so much. But she hadn't accepted the Lord. So one day I just called her up to see how she was doing. Now I was a, I was a young in the Lord. I you know I wasn't saved for many years. I was filled with the Holy Spirit though, and I was seeking the Lord. And anyway, I called her up to see how she was doing, and she was making no sense on the phone. Hi Jen, how are you? I don't know. What's going on, Jen? I don't know. That's all she would say. 
I hung up the phone. I pulled back and saw her husband answer the phone. I said, what's going on? What's wrong with Jennifer? He said, oh, she's been very depressed ever since Denise died. We have a friend that committed suicide. And she says Denise had the right idea. So a demon of suicide was trying to get her. She so I, the first thought I had was, all right, I'm going to fast and pray. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to fast. I'm Italian. I like to eat. And manja, manja, my grandfather always said. Manja, manja. So I decided I was working full time at the time. I was I was teaching at Faith Academy, a Christian school. I had children that were young in the school. I, you know, I I had a busy life. But instead of eating lunch during work, I would go and pray. So I'd fast lunch and pray. On the third day, I called my friend again. How are you doing, Jen? I don't know. Out of my mouth came. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was not, I had no idea this was going to happen. Didn't plan it. Out of my mouth came, in the name of Jesus, you demon of spirit of suicide, come at her. And it did. It came out. She was in the right, she said, oh, Roseanne, oh my goodness. Oh, was that? And she was talking, she was in the right mind. Totally set free over the phone. All glory and honor to God. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. That's the power of God. That's Jesus. That's the greater one. He uses you. He uses your words. And he needs you to be bold. Spend some time fasting and praying. Don't be conformed to this world. But renew your minds with the word of God to the will of God. His will on earth as it is in heaven. God wants his will on earth as it is in heaven. He wants people saved. He wants people delivered. He wants people set free. I'm going to ask the worship team to come. He wants to use you, saints. And I know this message, some of you might be saying, I don't know. I want you to.